Hello, and thank you for joining us. Uh, this is the presentation uh, on IBM and ILMT, how to save on costs and stay in compliance and avoid audits. Uh, we're just going to take a minute to let everyone uh, log into the webinar. So we'll be beginning in just about a minute. Hello, if you're just joining us, uh, this is the presentation on IBM and ILMT. Uh, we're just going to give everybody a chance to log in here, and we'll be beginning the presentation in just a minute. All right, uh, let's begin the presentation. Uh, welcome to the webinar. Uh, this is a joint webinar with Area Data Solutions and Miro Consulting. Uh, the title is IBM and ILMT, How to Save on Costs, Stay in Compliance, and Avoid Audits. My name is Sean Donahue, and I'm the VP of Marketing here at Miro Consulting. Joining me today is Sharon Tremblay, Senior IBM Analyst at Miro Consulting, and Mark Paulson, uh, senior Big Fix Consultant at Area Data Solutions. Uh, if you have a question during the broadcast, please use the question box in your webinar control panel, and we'll answer them at the end of the session. Uh, please note that if you'd like to ask a question, we won't say who is asking it, uh, but we'll read the question out loud uh, to the audience and to our presenters, and we'll give you the best answer that we can. If we don't know the answer, we'll get back to you after the webinar. All right, before we begin, uh, I'd just like to give you a brief summary of who we are. Uh, Mira Consulting is a leading global provider of software asset management and subscription management services for Oracle, Microsoft, IBM, Adobe, and Salesforce. We specialize in license management, audit advisory, negotiation tactics, support management, and cloud services. Our mission is to help our clients maximize ROI on their software license and subscription investments, stay in compliance, and negotiate successful contracts and audit settlements. Area Data Solutions is headquartered in Southern California with offices in Phoenix, Arizona, Oceanside, California, and San Jose. Area is managed by seasoned IBM and Amdahl veterans and offers clients unique IT strategy frameworks as well as infrastructure and managed hosting, hosting solutions, uh, which span technologies from legacy to emerging. Uh, they specialize in IBM security, Big Fix, ILMT, and IBM Analytics. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Sharon, who will begin our presentation. Take it away, Sharon. Sure. Thanks, Sean. Um, on today's webinar, we'll be covering IBM capacity licensing metrics, models, and, of course, the IBM license metric tool, or what's commonly known as ILMT. Um, there are some misconceptions about ILMT. It's offered by IBM for free, but it doesn't do everything out of the box. It needs uh, administrative um, work to get it operating properly. It does apply IBM licensing rules, but with bundling and stuff, there's, there's some things it'll recognize that you're going to have to have an administrator work with knowing what's installed on the servers to, to have it reporting correctly. Uh, in reality, it does need time and, and resources to set it up to have it accurately report. And that's important because if there was an audit situation to have subcapacity licensing, you need to, uh, sub the auditor that, um, Deloitte or KPMG, which IBM hires, will ask for the past two years of quarterly ILMT reports, and they'll use that as a basis for um, specific types of licensing, depending on the metric. Um, and this ILMT has been available for like 10 years now. It's been offered f free. 
by IBM to manage, uh, to detect and report software that's in your distributed server environment. Some people have said they um, they were told not to worry about ILMT, either by an, a sales rep or a reseller, uh, or don't worry about it, but it is required in the Passport Advantage Agreement to get uh, subcapacity licensing. So it's in, even though you may have gotten a verbal don't worry about it, you sh should um, continue to pursue looking into installing ILMT. Even if the reseller didn't say anything about it, um, they, they may have told someone else in your organization. And it's n not a strong defense to tell IBM you haven't heard of it because if you're just placing an order and you call up a reseller and say, I'd, I'd like 140 PVUs of DB2, they're going to sell it to you. They're not going to create a sales obstacle and then go into all the licensing nuances of why you should install ILMT. And I have seen on quotes or invoices from resellers that they'll have the language to say that you're subject to the terms of IBM's Passport Advantage Agreement. And it's in that agreement that it says that for some capacity licensing, you would run ILMT. So it, they, they leave it up to you. Even if you have a, a much bigger IBM software footprint and have an ELA, they it will be in the ELA that the Passport Advantage Agreement applies to you, even if it's not attached as a multi-page document to your ELA. Um, so what does ILMT actually look at. There's two metrics. The processor value unit, which is defined by IBM and it's based on your hardware man manufacturer, like you'll have a in, you might have an Intel x86 chip and the number of processors in that program. And IBM has some tables to say how many PVUs per processor core that you would do the math to say I would need like the 140 uh, PVUs of DB2 that would be for two cores on an x86 box or a smaller P series box. For a resource value unit, resources can be defined as many things. So it's by software title you would look up what the resource is, but a very common one for resources is the activated processor core that the program's managing. So we would count up all the uh, activated processor cores that are being managed by the program. And that would be, um, you would use that in a value unit table to calculate how many licenses you would need. So for both of these, you, you need a table to, to do the math, or you can have ILMT do the math for you. So what ILMT is going to help you with is if you don't want to run ILMT, full capacity is the entire physical server or your host that the software is installed on or is being managed in case of RVUs. And the concept of full capacity is, is that we're just going to take all the processor cores on that box and that's what you're going to license regardless of whether you virtualized it or some, you have something else that's partitioning in another way. With subcapacity or virtualization capacity, that's a preferred method if you use virtualization because then you're only going to license the cores allocated to the program or the processing power that you're giving it. So that, would, that takes advantage of your virtualization uh, capability. But ILMT, that's where it would come in and count it up and say, if I'm only giving it two cores, we're going to license two cores. So that's, and even if it's V-motioning over time, if it's two cores, two cores, two cores, it'll just, it'll just follow it around to uh, report, you know, that high watermark. If you, you know, uh, bump it up for a year-end thing to give it more processing power, it'll reflect that for a period of time it was four and it will, show that on the report when you run it. So an example of how subcapacity could help is uh, we have a lot of blade, I see a lot of blade servers besides P-Series and other, other uh, servers, but the blades are very common where you'll have 
you know, maybe 40 cores on one of those. So for full capacity, you would license all 40 cores for the software, IBM software you have on it. But if you had ILMT, you would license the virtual cores that you've allocated to it. So if your host had 40 cores, and you might have a couple different titles on there, not just DB2, but let's say you have DB2 Advanced, MQ, Sterling B2B Integrator, you would need the entire 40 cores covered with PVU licenses. So you know all three are not using the same processing power at the same time, but based on full capacity, that would be like over $5 million at list price for licenses. But if you did it with subcapacity and you have two VMs with two cores, two virtual CPUs allocated, and another two to MQ, and another four to Sterling B2B, you'd only have to buy enough licenses to cover the two cores, or 140 PVUs, and that's like less than a tenth of what it was at full capacity, the, the, the cost of the licenses. So this could be a, a very rude wake-up call during an audit if you didn't have I, ILMT installed, because the finding is huge. And assumptions usually get made that because I use VMware or LPARs or another virtualization, that it would be less. So the benefits of subcapacity licensing is to reduce software cost. And also to that total cost of ownership because you're not investing as much money into the software. You can leverage your virtualization to get a, a better deal or you know, less licensing, better operation of your uh, pooling of your resources. And you, it gets, it's flexible because ILMT is keeping track of things. So you can always double check it against the report to make sure you've caught everything. And you could take, a, besides the you know, VMware, if you have a P-series, you could do the micro micro partitioning or pooling or other you know v motioning where you're, you're getting the uh, best mix of your resources and also less licensing and um, what does it say in passport advantage regarding uh, ILMT that you have to install it within 90 days of you first deploying a product that you should have the most current version installed you're going to generate audit reports so that ILMT has uh, different ways they can display the data, but an audit report packages up a nice set of reports that would give to any auditor that is doing an IBM uh, software license review everything they need to see where where things were over time and also the, the findings with the totals. And anything that you've done in the background to fine-tune it they can kind of see what's been uh, done there. And then you, you keep them on record for two years, and then only when IBM asks for them for an audit, that that's when you turn them over. The, the ILMT to, tool is not phoning home with your reports all the time. It's you keep them until there's an audit. Uh, ILMT can work on Windows or Unix and Linux servers. It does the software discovery. Occasionally, it'll, it'll talk phone home just to get um, uh, definitions of new software and new versions. It recognizes a lot of the bundling that IBM does with software because there'll be, uh, like even ILMT has a, a version of DB2 that's included to uh, pull aggregate all the data. It has hardware discovery. Um, it can do multiple things, and it also does the math, which some people, you know, I'm used to doing the, the, the PVU math, so it's not that bad for me, but it, there's uh, tricks where you would, wouldn't um, license a server for more than its physical capacity, so that's full capacity, so you cap it there. Uh, you have the benefits of you have someplace, someplace centralized where you have access to all this. It has the latest definitions from IBM to help you. And um, you can also use it for pl your own planning in your environment. This is Mark's slide. 
All right. Uh, thanks, Sharon. Uh, we, Mark is having some technical difficulties right now. Uh, in the meantime, probably related to weather. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Sharon, I'm just going to ask you so we can keep our presentation rolling. Uh, can you keep presenting here, and we will get back. We'll get to Mark uh, when he has his issues resolved. Okay. Um, I'm not as uh, technical as Mark is, but I do see a lot of ILMT installations, and I know generally how it works. Um, IBM offers big uh, ILMT at no charge. It includes other IBM software in it, like DB2, that's going to be free, and that's where your um, main server is going to be collecting the data from the agents that are deployed within the environment. The agents will be deployed onto the virtual servers. They report back to the uh, aggregating uh, database, and that's where it's going to generate the report. Um, those agents are very light, and actually, for like a big fix product, they're the same agents that you would use for Big Six inventory, Big Six patch, Big Six compliance, the whole family. So if you wanted uh, to deploy something a little more robust, now you already have some agents deployed. There's you know that potential there. Um, at that main server, you're going to have a console or yeah a dashboard where your admit ILMT administrator can. Uh, navigate around, look at um, different things, make sure it's all the servers are reporting in, because sometimes that could be an issue if there's a communication problem. It'll, um, and also those agents, if you have like big fix patch, will be our policy base, so they're always doing something. If there's something to find, it, they'll be uh, working on patching things or compliance or just every 30 minutes reporting into the, the main server or to a relay. Let's say you have a firewall or other locations, it can report to a relay and then that will communicate with the main ILMT server. Um, and there's a couple things in the dashboard they can look at, you know, just to make sure that new servers are added, have an agent. Um, if they might have to do a little tweaking if let's say you license something by terabytes instead of PVUs, they're they're able to make that adjustment. ILMT will see it, but it'll make the adjustment to say the the the, per, the administrator can make the adjustment so it's not reporting PVUs and causing concern when somebody sees a report. It'll say this. They could put in a comment that says this is licensed by terabytes here at uh, the company. Um, you can also check the, the administrator or they can make a report to um, see how things are trending. If you have peak times for some pr products where they'll uh, allocate more resources, like you're a retail company or um, you're, you're seasonal, there might be, or end of year reporting, they can it can double check it for you and keep track of that in case you need to do some forecasting and budgeting, especially if you're going to be getting new hardware. How would that look if you were to get more of what you already have? Um, ILMT um, is just for IBM software, but if you got a more robust product like Big Six or another endpoint manager from IBM. You might be able to do other software publishers, which makes this a more robust tool because it's not just limited to IBM anymore. So that would be, uh, if you are looking for a tool, a good investment because you're already required to run ILMT for IBM. Um, Big Six Inventory can do a lot of publishers, a lot of software products, and it, if you're already using one tool, why get a second one? So this will be very similar because the ILMT technology, uh, when it went from version 7 to 9, when it, the agents are really the big fix agents. It's um, a nice way to expand it to continue using what you already have. And also, the, the rest of the big fix family, like patch and compliance, would uh, one agent does them all. And as I was saying, it's the one tool 
that you can manage your data center, your distributed servers, even cloud if you want. Um, IBM does have their bring your own software license uh, policy that is for all the public, you know, a lot of the major public clouds, AWS, IBM itself, Google, Oracle. So um, you can install ILMT agents on those uh, deployments. And it does do uh, a lot of operating systems. The older operating systems like Windows 2000, it no longer does, but there's an alternate reporting method to to stay with subcapacity licensing. And um, this slide, um, probably Mike Mark was going to tell you about all of the stuff that Big Fix can do. It's the patch management, your core protection, your security and compliance, uh, some automation, mobile management. It does a it, it's more of an endpoint manager rather than just servers. You can even do it on uh, uh, mobile phones and other devices. All right, thanks, Sharon. Um, so I, we have a couple questions from the audience. I just actually want to mention a quick thing. Uh, even if you do have ILMT installed, uh, it's very important that you have it uh, uh, that it's installed correctly. We run into many use cases uh, where the organization has, has, you know, they've done their installation, uh, but they didn't install it correctly, or there were things hiding behind a firewall. For various reasons, uh, it was not comprehensive uh, due to the way it was installed and set up. So if you do have licensing concerns, I strongly suggest you uh, reach out and contact a, a licensed specialist like Miro. Uh, we always like to point out is that the tools are, are some good at getting information, but they don't know the software licensing rules. And uh, that's a very important thing to compare against the outputs of this. So the first questions uh, that came in, it's actually two, I'm just going to kind of combine them, is uh, what if we can't get our ILMT running correctly? Uh, and what if... Uh, what if uh, um, you know I need help installing it? Because we do run into a lot of clients actually who do have the same difficulty. And my suggestion here is if you have any difficulty running or installing your ILMT, uh, please contact Ed at Area Data Solutions. Uh, they can help you out and uh, get you get your systems working and make sure that everything is running installed correctly. Because the last thing you want is to install it incorrectly and have IBM tell you that they're going to charge you for full capacity. So again, if you need any uh, assistance in installing it. Uh, you know, please contact Ed. Um, again, also, if you, your IB, ILMT tool uh, says you need more licenses, again, we suggest you contact Ed at Area Data Solutions uh, because you may not need them. Uh, sometimes, uh, because of the way it gets installed, you may actually have more licenses than you need. You may have less licenses than you need. It's always good to con uh, talk to an expert and also to make sure when, if you do acquire additional licenses, uh, you get the best terms and conditions possible, which is very important. Uh, and there's See, we have one more question here. I'm going to turn it over to Sharon for this one. Is uh, uh, we didn't install ILMT, or are we going to get in trouble with IBM? What should we do now? Oh, thanks, Sean. Um, if you haven't installed ILMT, even though it's been a available for about 10 years, you can always install it now. I mean, I, what's that that Chinese proverb about the tree? What's the best time to plant a tree? Is 20 years ago? But what's the second best time is now, because if you never install it, you'll always be at full capacity. And it's that's never good. If you use any kind of virtualization, that that's a terrible situation to be in. Eventually, you will catch up and have two years, sometimes with an audit. If you do it before the audit letter came, they'll accept it. I mean, people make mistakes or, or overlook things. IBM does can be a little understanding with the audits that, you know, a good effort was made, they'll, they'll consider it. Um, and also with ILMT, when it, sometimes when it's not working correctly, it gives you little hints in the in the tool. Because with virtualization, it, it errs. If it can't figure things out, it'll err on the side of caution and give it like a, a bigger value. So that would be something that Ed could help with. Okay, uh, so we have one question and one comment. Uh, I'll tell you right now the question that's being asked uh, about Big Fix. 
Uh, this is a kind of a complex answer, and we would like to make sure we give you the time you need because we have to ask a couple questions. So we're going to get back to you after uh, the presentation. And we did have a comment from someone who had difficulty with the audio. And uh, yes, after the presentation, we will send out a link. Uh, the whole presentation will be hosted on YouTube. We'll send you a link to that, uh, and you should be able to watch it once the audio in your situation is settled. Uh, so with that, uh, we're going to end the webinar. Thank you, everyone, for attending. We'll be sending a follow-up. Uh, and if you need any assistance with your licensing, please contact Miro Consulting uh, at info at miroconsulting.com, 732-738-8511. And if you need some help with your big fix installation, uh, call Area Data Solutions, or excuse me, or any IBM licensing, uh, call Area Data Solutions at 310-880-2320 or email them at ed at areadatasolutions.com. So this concludes today's webinar. Thank you very much. Have a great day.